Prelates have a moral obligation to preserve and protect the sacred theology of the faith, but throughout history, and even today, some are trying to bypass this duty. The pro-homosexual trend in the hierarchy is so entrenched, basic doctrinal clarifications meet with petulance and defiance. Church militants William Mahoney explores growing dissent over the Holy See's latest pronouncement. From lover to lover. Prelates and priests continue to add their voices to a chorus of dissent, vowing to bless same-sex couples. Despite the Vatican's recent clarification, the church cannot bless sin. One of the first prelates in the U.S. to dissent was Archbishop John Wester of Santa Fe. We live in a pluralistic society. Archbishop Wester is the USCCB's liaison to the heretical Association of United States Catholic Priests. Bear in mind, Archbishop Wester was one of the signatories on the God is on your side document in support of LGBT youth. The statement Wester signed has been signed by other pro-LGBT prelates like Newark's Cardinal Joseph Tobin, Lexington's Bishop John Stowe, and San Diego's Bishop Robert McElroy. In Europe, Bishop Johann Bonny of Antwerp noted, I feel ashamed for my church. Mainz Bishop Peter Kolgraf noted he was bothered by the Vatican's position. Priests have also taken to the pulpit to voice their disobedience. But then if the CDF foolishly thought that just saying no would be the end of the issue, they just don't know us New Yorkers do that. The language employed while reiterating current teaching intimated that these unions for LGBT people, their deepest, most powerful expressions of love are of necessity sinful. One of the first priests to speak out was pro-LGBT Jesuit James Martin. Not since the anger over sex abuse in 2002 and 2018 have I seen so many people so demoralized and ready to leave the church as I have this week. If people are saying they're gonna leave the church because the church refuses to bless one of the four sins that cries to heaven for vengeance, then all they're doing is formalizing what they've already done in their own heart. Back to Europe, some priests are expressing their dismay, one Irish cleric saying he was appalled by the CDS statement. And over in Austria, Father Helmut Schuller insisted his group will continue to bless same-sex couples. The CDF's clarification was triggered by Germany, where blessings of same-sex unions began. Now, over 200 German-speaking so-called theologians signed a statement on Sunday claiming the Vatican clarification is characterized by a paternalistic gesture of superiority and discriminates against homosexual people and their lifestyle. The CDF's confirmation of church teaching is fundamental. The church cannot bless sin. There is no love where there is no truth. Clergy who exchange truth for feelings endanger their souls and the souls of others. William Mahoney, Church Militant, The Download, Detroit. Disobedient clergy talk about how much the CDF has hurt people with sexual disorientation, but they don't mention how much homosexual clergy, the main culprits in the clergy sexual abuse, has caused in the church. There you go. Well, here we have a situation. I, I mean, William did a wonderful job in that package, but uh, here you have a situation where the church is now uh, questioning uh, basic morals, the moral yeah. doctrine of the church. And, uh, you know, a lot of these teachings of natural law do enjoy the infallible reach of the ordinary magisterium of the church, um, including the one that we're talking about now. But today we're all caught up in these sexual issues, that, you know, ever since Humanae Vitae and, and, the, and the popularization of contraception. But back in the early church, it was less the moral issues and more the faith doctrine. And um, back in one of the first, well, actually, other than the Council of Jerusalem, the first ecumenical council in the church, and that is the Council of Nicaea in the year 325 AD. In the Council of Nicaea, you had the, uh, the heresy of, of Arianism that spread all around the empire. Yep. And, um, and the, the bishop, or the, the priest Arius, was the culprit of this. And basically what it says, the bottom line is that Christ was not divine. He was not co-eternal with the Father. He was created by the Father, albeit perhaps the first in all creation, but still, he, basically, he was not there God. There was once when he was not. Yeah, there was once when he was not. Point. Therefore, how can he be divine? This was a heresy, of course, the opposite heresy of that that came a little later was docetism, which basically said Christ wasn't human. 
he was divine, but he really didn't have a human he, body. He appeared to be. Uh, he appeared yeah. to be human, but see, what the church does, of course, through the Holy Spirit and her councils is to understand who Christ is and to formulate a way for us to understand it that creates that balance and makes that balance intelligible for us that Christ is both God and man, both 